this is what you're supposed to see in your mind about this song. You know, yeah. maybe some people want to do that. I mean, you can't argue with that. But <laughs> I love that one. How did you feel uh, the first time you heard a record that you recorded on the radio when it caught you by surprise and, and you didn't know that obviously that you, one of your songs was, was coming on when you first heard yourself on the air in an unstaged setting? Well, it was really exciting, you know, the first time you hear yourself on the radio. What'd you think? Uh, it's just, uh, it's just really exciting, you know, you want to call your folks and say that they're going to play it and you're going to be hearing it and uh, all of this. What was the first but, song? Uh, let's see. Probably, I don't know if that ever made it nationwide, though. <laughs> so I was going way back when we first moved out here from Colorado. But uh, let's see, I guess the first one probably was with uh, Poco, I guess. We did the first album. Or actually, no, it was uh, Rick Nelson. Or no, that was after. That was after. But You were in the Stone one. Canyon band with Rick yeah, Nelson. Yeah, I pretty much got Stone Canyon band together. It was, uh, uh, Rick had seen uh, Poco play at the Troubadour quite a few times. And uh, when he found out that, that I had quit, uh, he had called me up and wanted to know if I could get a band together. So what it turned out to be was the guys that I came out, they were called the Soul Survivors from Denver. And so they were still in L.A. and didn't have anything really going on at the time. And so I went and grabbed them. And that was Alan Camp and Pat Shanahan and Rick and I. And we put the band together. That wasn't the same guys that did Express Way to Your Heart, was it? No, no, that was different. Yeah, so. They were the sole survivors of Denver. They had another, they had kind of a little hit back there in Colorado during that time. Uh, did, were you, um, well, why don't you talk a little bit about Rick Nelson? What kind of a guy was he? He was a sweetheart. <laughs> I mean, just uh, couldn't find a nicer guy to work with. I worked with him, oh, probably two, three years, and then I gave up music for a while, and then came back and I think it was Rudy the Fifth that might have done the last album. I, was, I went back to Nebraska because at the time I was married and uh, we had twins and I needed to get back there and take care of my kids. And then uh, he had called and they needed a bass player. His bass player was, they, anyway, they weren't finding the right part so I flew out and I think it was kind of just to get me back in the band. So I did that album with him and then uh, eventually a friend of mine from Pennsylvania that was going to school in Nebraska uh, came out with me and he had a high voice and so when I went with Linda Ronstadt to join the Eagles he, I replaced him and so Rick wasn't left in the cold without a bass player off, right off the bat and then they went on to uh, what's the song uh, Canada Garden Party Garden Party yeah you weren't on that album no no that was Steve Love my friend though uh -huh. were you on uh, She Belongs to Me uh, yeah yeah I think so uh, we did the live album at the Troubadour the first one and then there was one I think it was Rudy the Fifth Maybe it might not have been. There's, yeah, I, I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. I found out the other day I'd given all my albums away. I had to go to a memorabilia store to get them. <laughs> every time somebody comes over, you know, friends or somebody, it, gosh, I don't have that album, so I'd always give it to them because I never listen to them at home once yeah. I make an album. Yeah. And so I was looking around one day. I didn't have not have one of my own albums, so I had to go to buy used ones. <laughs> wow. Um, Anyway, what other songs from the Eagles were you on that uh, became hits? Well, let's see. As far as on my own, the uh, leads of Take It to the Limit was probably the only one that, which was nice about that. It was never really promoted. It was the, the radio people chose it without, you know, pushing it. Yeah. A lot of times you'll push a single, but this one just, it was on demand that it was, it was being played so much that they had to release it on a single. So that was actually a real nice feeling. and. Uh, Every time we would play it live, it would always bring the house down. Mm -hmm. It was like the song, and it still works pretty good. <laughs> uh, I'll see. I don't know if you feel comfortable talking about that. Any thoughts come to mind when I mention Best of My Love? Yeah. Great song. Lion Eyes. <laughs> Lion Eyes are all great songs. They still hold water, I think. That's my way of putting it anyway. Yeah. They still play them, and they sound good. Peaceful, easy feeling. That, uh, was that fun to play? Uh, Any one particular oh, yeah. fun, uh, fun song to play? Well, I like more of the, uh, the, the more up, kind of like one of these nights in Hotel California and that kind of music myself. Mm -hmm. the, the ballads are okay, but as far as playing bass to them and singing backgrounds, it's, you know, pretty much boom, 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 just the simple <laughs> stuff. Not much you can say about that. Yeah. yeah. Now, if I'd been singing lead on it, I might have had a different feeling about it. You know, already gone, I liked. 
you know, I like, I like more of the rock and roll stuff we did. Yeah. yeah. Any uh, words about uh, Eagles getting back together and doing any kind of a uh, Not really. I kind of keep in touch. I talked to Don Felder and Emily quite a bit. I think uh, Joe Walsh is down in Nashville now. And I'm not sure. I think Glenn's just finished a new album. And uh, Bernie was playing with Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, but I think he's on his own again. I don't know what, what he's doing, actually. I haven't seen him for a while. But, uh, it's one hand, I, or uh, one hand, one song I wrote that uh, I think Felder, well, I wrote the lyrics. It's called Too Many Hands, which is one of my, I'm glad I was involved and able to write it because it's almost coming true now about destroying our Mother Earth and what I don't like about destroying it. So maybe that'll be a classic someday when yeah. there's nobody here to play it. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so how did you get connected with uh, Rick Roberts? It sounds like you guys have been friends. Well, yeah, yeah we, we, LA, you've brought just about everybody, uh, everybody's name that lives in L.A. and that Oh, well, we got to know each other real well in London uh, in poker games. I remember we used to play a lot of poker with the Eagles. But I had uh, played on one of Rick's albums before the Eagles. And uh, we just kind of known each other through the, the crowd. And uh, the way this band came together, I was just uh, more or less uh, doing some writing with a friend of mine, Reggie Fisher, and just doing some demos and just kind of kicking around. And I just happened to see Rick in uh, a restaurant in L.A. And he was putting a band together. And at the time, I had short hair and was wearing glasses. and. He didn't know who I was, and Mark Andes was, I think, the bass player for Heart. And so Rick's saying, yeah, I'm going to be looking for a bass player. And so Mark's standing behind me, pointing down at my head. Rick didn't know what he meant, and then he finally says, well, this is Randy. And so from there, it was like I wasn't doing anything, and Rick already had the band kind of started. So I hadn't played bass in probably six years or something like that, because when I went on my own, I started playing acoustic and singing. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was like starting all over again, which is really fun. And actually, I'm enjoying this more than I did, you know, when I was younger, like the traveling and stuff. I mean, you know, I'm thinking of different things. <laughs> yeah. What was it like to be with the Eagles when uh, they were, uh, you were there at the pinnacle of their career? It was, uh, it was pretty crazy. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was uh, another kind of lifestyle, that's for sure. Like, you know, every night there was the, with the third encore, the top floor of the hotel and all this every night and parties and uh, a lot of fun and a lot of, you know, I don't know what you'd call it, just, you've got, I don't know, after a while, that's basically, I kind of took off after a while, it got a little bit too much for me, the traveling and just every night and it was, uh, it was driving me a little crazy, so I had to get away from it, because it, it works on you after a while. Yeah. Well, I think that's... And, uh, but you know, it was too far <laughs> away from the business, too far away from all the contacts and communication. And, and it ended up being like, hey, if I'm really going to get back into this, I'm going to have to get back into the city where it is, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's all the there's thing. To, you've got to do it. You know? That's what I know. I have a, a couple of friends that are going through it now. They live a little too far out to really be in touch with it. And they're going, man, I wish I could get this. I said, well, you know, it's real weird, but if you're not available, even telephones and jet planes are not being available. You've got to be there physically. And it's weird, but that's the way it is. Do you yeah, like you never fly? Know. I mean, there was always this thing about... I know, it, you know, well, no, in those days, I was a little overdosed with it. And plus, with that kind of success in being 19 years old, uh, you know, that kind of success in being an instant millionaire and all that crap that goes with it, and not having a moment's peace, I, I basically... <laughs> For a while, it was like I couldn't handle it. Then, you know? uh, I, mean, I know you know that experience, yeah, man. It's like all at once you're nice there, show. and you're a big star. I mean, and it's like international, and you're going, oh no, I'm. Mean, wait a minute, this is me. I know somebody wrong here. I always dreamed about this, but now it's here, and I don't know how to deal with it. And there was so much we were traveling all the time, and of course in those days everybody was doing psychedelics, and that was. Oh.